Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society. He has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now. Here are your hosts, Craig and Cam, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information. Hey, folks, and how are we doing today? Hey, everybody. I'm doing good. Yeah, well, of course, we've you know, ruined a couple of drinks, whatever. Yeah. You know, but it's like it's getting a little cold outside, though. It is, although not today or yesterday, I have to admit. Uh, yes. Like, like it's, it's, yes, broadly it is getting colder, but 26 degrees Celsius yesterday. I know, because, like, it went from, like, I went to work in the morning to do a bar shift, and I had to wear a jacket. And yeah. by the time I left the bar shift, I was down to my T-shirt and pants, and I was still hot. I wore to work heavy jeans uh, and my waterproof winter boots, and luckily, I went prepared. And so by yeah, the time I left, uh, it was shorts and flip-flops, but, but jeepers <laughs> creepers, <laughs> folks. Like, th- 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 this is not regular October weather. I guess we probably should tell people who we are. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Am I listening to some sort of home improvement show or something? Or what am I? What am I? (laughs) Sort of. (laughs) The Weather Channel? No, no, no. no. This isn't the Weather Channel. Uh, This is Tiki Central Canada, and I am your host, Craig, and I will be your mixologist, bartender, and information for the show. Uh, My name's Cam. I'm the uh, the resident everyman and asker of questions. That's right. He quizzes me. All the time. Yeah, I'm a curious fella. That's right. That's how he got on the show. He's like, so what's the show mm-hmm. about? You know what? Why don't you come on board and yeah. we'll tell you what it's all about. Well, and I mean, speaking ah, of which, what, what, what exactly are we talking about today? So today we're, uh, I know if you notice, like now we're in the fall season. And mm-hmm. of course, everywhere we're going now, it's right. It's all pumpkin spice. You go, and, you go to Tim Hortons, you go to McDonald's. <laughs> You yeah. go to some place and get muffins and pumpkin spice muffins, yeah. right? Yeah. And I, I know that's not one of your favorite things. It's not. It's look. I love pumpkin pie. Yeah. But I feel that pumpkin is best left in pie form. In pie form, I yeah. know. Or jack o' lantern. Exactly. Um, I don't need my Tim Hortons ice cap to taste like pumpkin spice. Yeah. yeah. It's already got an ice cap flavor to it. I don't need to add anything to it. No, exactly. <laughs> oh. uh, but you know, it, 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 it's but, the universe we live in, I suppose. But you know, it was funny because I was mentioning this to someone the other day at the bar. Thanks, is that, Obama. Yeah, exactly. Way to go, man. <laughs> um, I mentioned this the other day that remember if, if you go back like five, maybe even to say, okay, say ten years ago, mm-hmm. the only people would do any kind of flavorful seasonal drink right was mcdonald's remember saint patty's they'd be the mint drink yeah and then um well i mean don't don't, don't forget though i mean like green beer i mean that's not a mcdonald's okay yeah, but i mean like for the most part they're the only ones that brought out a, a seasonal drink sure yeah you know what i mean yeah. and then also of course now we have Just starbucks kind of and tim hortons yeah. and everybody just went woohoo mm-hmm. so guess what we're not doing pumpkin spice thank God. And I know, because I know you'd be like, that's it, I'm out of here. Yeah, so what uh, are we doing, though? So we're doing uh, cinnamon spice, and of uh, course, we're going to add some rum. Okay. Hey, okay. Well, I, got I, my I attention got the rum. Now. Okay, yeah. I get the rum. There we go. <laughs> so what are we talking about? That's what keeps them in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that and the, 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 the iron chain. The non-supply but... of Mad Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, the iron chain. That's yeah. right. Keep it coming, keep it coming. That's it. Uh, no, but seriously, Craig, shut up. What are we talking about today? So today, because uh, obviously we said we talked about uh, this season is cold, and you mm-hmm. want something warm to drink and to keep you warm. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some hot beverages. Wonderful. We're not going to talk about one, and we're not going to talk about two. Hmm. I am actually going to give you guys, that's right, if you act now, four recipes. That's a, that's a lot of that's recipes. That's a lot of recipes we're doing today. I assume you and I won't be making them all today, because that sort of falls into the, well, <laughs> Falls I didn't bring the territory. kitchen up with us, yeah, so yeah. unfortunately, okay. yes, okay. I don't have all the drinks. Okay, so we're doing here. four drinks, yes. and they are... Okay, so the drinks we're going to cover today, uh, the first one is called the Flip, which is from the 1700s. Oh, that's an oldie. That's an oldie, but goodie. Mm. That's right. Uh, hot Toddy, which mm-hmm. we've, I'm sure you've heard. Or... I've, I've certainly heard it. it. It sounds like a really like British or English drink. You Correct, know? yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that was in 1786. So that's that, also fairly old. Very yeah. old, yeah. Uh, the next one up on uh, the list there is Jerry Thomas's uh, 1862 version, and he was of the of the hot toddy. 
of the hot rum drinks that I we see. can talk about. Okay. Okay. Now, Terry, Jerry Thomas, if you haven't listened to a podcast before, was actually the very first bartender to publish a bartender's guide. I vaguely or remember book. that one of our earlier episodes. Yeah, so I'm 1842, yeah. around that bracket there somewhere. Okay. And lo and behold, the very last one is Martha Stewart. Ah, so it's it's the uh, the, <laughs> the toilet wine version. Cook with Cam Day. It's a prison, uh, prison there. Eh? <laughs> that's right. That's where the recipe came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's written right. under a prison wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In perfectly legible script. That's right. Uh, 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 underneath a flower arrangement. Do you know what's funny? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever seen the show. There's actually is a Martha Stewart Snoop Dogg show. Oh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm well aware and, of it. And, yeah. oh my God, it's one of those ones where you just can't stop watching. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's just too funny. A match made in Bizarro Land. <laughs> well, because it is a Bizarro Land. So what ends up happening is that Martha Stewart's on one side, and of course her kitchen is all stainless steel and everything mm. else. And then on the other side of the studio is Snoop Dogg's, and his is all black. Yeah. So it's like, you know, yeah, good pr- versus pristine. evil. Yeah, well, it's like, you know, you know yeah. it's almost like God versus the devil. I'm just surprised <laughs> it isn't entirely marijuana themed, but... Uh, um, I'm pretty sure there's a few times yeah, that... Uh, yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> it comes into play, I'm yeah. sure. Um, so I think this is the first time that we're covering this many recipes all at once. You're right, yes, for sure. Why are we covering this many recipes all at so once? So the reason why we're covering this many recipes, obviously not just because of the season that we're in, but also, mm-hmm. too, a lot of these recipes also have... They're kind of evolving, like we talked about before, where like one kind of evolves into the next one, calls and evolves into the next one. So in other words, there's a basic recipe, mm-hmm. and then it just sort of progresses into the next right. one, the next Va- one. Variations on a theme. Time, or, right, right. That, I through, gotcha. Exactly. Yeah. So what's the basic recipe for these drinks? All right, so let's go through some recipes. The very mm-hmm. first one we're going to talk about is the hot toddy one we okay, talked about. Okay, the English. Uh, pip, 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 and chip, mm-hmm. uh, So the hot toddy is a mixture of two ounces of rum. Good start. One tablespoon of honey. Okay. Yeah, that's the sweet stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then basically fill the rest up of the glass with hot water. Well, so... that seems a bit wasteful. Well, kind of like that grog. Remember we talked about before? Sure, yeah. Water, no, no, no. Rum, Fair right? enough. So you British get that Navy. Nice sweetness. Yeah. Now you just add honey in there. Right. And boom, now you get the hot toddy. I see. Now in Canada, we actually, our version of the hot toddy, we actually had maple syrup instead of honey. But of course. But of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you, you, you mentioned spice. Yes. Uh, at, the, at the beginning of this episode. Yes. So what are we talking about here? So there's no spice if you notice in that recipe. I, I, yeah, yes. I recognize that. Now through but... time, eventually, what would be added to it would be other things such as cloves, lime and slices, and then cinnamon, your favorite. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of cinnamon, <laughs> no. I got to admit. It, 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 See, it just, it's it one of my favorite Christmas ingredients. to me. Yeah. And we're not quite there yet, you know? Well, no, but also, too, like, what I like about cinnamon, and uh, I've, I think I've used it in some recipes that we've used before on the show, mm-hmm. is that cinnamon is one of those great uh, syrups you can put into a drink, and all of a sudden it makes it taste spicy. Sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I know people are like, oh, it's that hot. Bite. Yeah. But it's not hot. Right. It's not that pepper hot, right? Right, it's, right, right. Yeah. Something else. I mean, it, it's the same, like, I, I used to really like cinnamon gum, but I chewed it too much until my oh, tongue my, started to what disintegrate. was that, red? Oh, big red, it? big red, yeah. Oh, oh boy, my oh God. boy, yeah. That that um, they that don't even left make that anymore, do they? I don't think so. Oh man, I remember that big red. I'd be, I remember, yeah. Like you said, you bite in it, almost like, oh my God, my mouth's on fire. Yeah, <laughs> it's like god awful. <laughs> I need pop to wash it down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So uh, one of the things also too about this drink is also it was known or believed to relieve symptoms of cold and flu. This is the hot toddy. Yes. I now see. it makes sense because we've always. I'm sure we've all had it where you get a cold mm-hmm. and you're at work and your coworkers go, hey, you know, hot water and lime, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah or you know, cinnamon yeah, or whatever. Or lemon. Yeah, or, yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, chicken noodle soup, right? Half the reason that that's good for you is because it's just, it's hot. It's hot. Yeah. It's cleaning at the system, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Demucusify you and what. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, that, that sounds like quite an interesting uh, uh, drink, drink, but yeah. but pretty simple. Yes, very yeah. simple. Not a lot of ingredients. There we go. So what what's up with the Jerry Thomas version of this? Okay, so the Jerry Thomas version actually was first called the Hot Spiced Rum. That okay. was the title that he gave it back then. Okay, well, I see where... Okay. Yeah, the, 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 we'll, the evolution is coming. The evolution through. now. So right. now we have Jamaican rum. So two ounces of Jamaican rum. So mm-hmm. it's not just a white rum or regular rum. It's mm-hmm. actually Jamaican rum. Okay. And the reason why it's Jamaican rum is because Jamaican rum is, 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 is aged longer. I see. It's more refined. Okay. Okay. It's a little more polished. Uh, then you got to have teaspoon of sugar. There's your sweet. Okay. Teaspoon of cloves. So mm-hmm. a little bit of spice in Get there. Your, yeah, your zing. Teaspoon of allspice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tablespoon of butter. Let's throw some butter in there. Interesting. Okay. And hot water. 
Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so, so this is uh, this would work nicely with the sort of modern. Uh, there, there's a popular coffee based drink that it's called golden coffee or something like that, where you're sorry, it's basically coffee with a bunch of butter in it. I think you mentioned it once before. To yeah, me. yeah, and, yeah. And it's supposed to be like really good for weight loss and this type of thing. So, so because I guess like you, like I think you mentioned it, like because you uh, the butter is in you coach your system, so yeah, you coach your like, stomach. like it's like a bunch of high fat, so like it it it. It takes care of your appetite for a while. Right. It's kind of like cold pizza on a hangover day. Right? Exactly. You eat yeah. the cold pizza one slice and you're like, you know what? I'm good. Yeah, good to go. I'm good to go. Let's start all over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Redo from start. <laughs> Where's the cold beer? Uh, yeah. So, okay, we got, we got two, two we done got now. Two, down. All right, yeah? down to two, two more to go. All right. So, the next one we're going to talk about is the Martha Stewart. Let's oh, go. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yes, it's this from this is from prison, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. So uh, it's two gold, sorry, two ounces of gold rum. Okay. Yeah, pretty gold, fancy gold rum. Now, is that a brand or is that just the? No, no. So when you look at uh, categories of rum, yeah. So there's white rum, yeah, spiced rum, yeah, aged rum, yeah, dark rum, yep, gold rum. Okay. So yeah, so you get two ounces of Jamaican rum, mm-hmm. uh, or gold get, rum. Sorry, gold rum. Yes, mm. you're right. Two ounces of gold rum. Yeah. Um, one tablespoon of hot buttered Rum batter. Hot buttered rum batter. Hot, hot buttered, buttered rum, rum batter. Hot buttered, buttered rum, rum batter. batter. Yeah, that's difficult. Also, people are like, wow, what's going on? It's yeah. a stereo. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so two, uh, one tablespoon of that, and then I top it off with boiling water, of course. So, you're talking about batter now, and last time I uh-huh. checked, I didn't sign up for a cooking course. <laughs> that's right. Um, well, what, it is Martha Stewart, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, Martha, all right, yeah. let's get out the mixing bowls. Yeah, I, I kind of assumed it would involve, like, toilet liquor. Or I don't know why like I keep on saying Martha's British or something. For some strange reason, I keep on doing her in British accent. No, she's a hardened <laughs> criminal i know <laughs> so i bet so, you she kicks some serious ass in there. oh I, I wouldn't i wouldn't want to cross her um, That's, i wouldn't want either oh. it's like no way so this is batter yeah like so the cookie batter or uh, close let's just go through the recipe and then you can kind sure, of yeah, do okay. your own little appreciation of that one. okay so it is gonna be one pound of brown sugar Holy crap. now this is actually a batch remember now this okay. is not for one drink this is for like you know probably about 50 drinks so, yeah, so it's gonna be one pound of brown butter, and we'll we'll put the recipe in the, the description. Mm-hmm. Right? Pound one, of brown sugar, brown sorry, brown sugar, uh, one pound of sugar. So now we're up to two pounds of sugar now. It's a lot of sugar. One tablespoon of uh, ground cinnamon. Okay. One teaspoon of ground cloves. Mm-hmm. One teaspoon of ground nutmeg. One pound of butter. <whistles> yeah, that's right. A and a quart of vanilla ice cream. Ah, ice cream. So what you're going to do is you're going to blend all of it together. The ice cream will eventually will be the glue that kind of puts everything together. Right, okay. And then you do is you take that batter, you freeze that, mm-hmm. and then almost like ice cream, so you take it out, you scoop out a scoop. Mm-hmm. And you plonk and it in your beverage. Plonk it in, your, in the glass, add the rum, add the hot water, and boom. Interesting. You've got hot rum. That sounds really tasty. And, and really like. <laughs> unhealthy, but you know, I mean, hey, well, hey. let's be honest here. Neither Come of us are now. really working on our waistline. Yeah, we're not working on our waistline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm on on a show for you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for well, counting we've calories, got, we've got great faces for radio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, hey, I said we. Um, okay, so that's three. Yes, and I feel like we've missed one. Yes, we did. So the first one we're going to talk about now is the flip. And that was the first one. That, that's the oldest. It is the oldest one. So why are we talking about it last? So the reason why we're talking about it last is because it doesn't follow the pattern of the other three. So if you notice, the other ones had rum, mm-hmm. some sort of sweetener of some kind, sugar mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. and then hot water. And right. then, of course, other spices sure. and other things yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Garnet. This yeah. one does not follow this equation at mm-hmm. all. And uh, so also the oldest. Interesting. So yes. things started off, like typically with, with, with the drinks I've noticed is, you know, we start with a really simple recipe and then it, it, it you know, slowly evolves or, or, you know, it turns into something more complex. But exactly. in this case, it was, it's kind of. Backwards. This is the only one that doesn't follow the rules. Yeah. yeah. So this one is made back in the um, 1700s, mm-hmm. um, back in the taverns, okay. in the colonial days. And so what happened was that the taverns were every single town, there was several taverns. Sure. And that was like the place to go. Yeah. But the public the, house. The public house, right. Yeah. Exactly, yes. Now, uh, the thing was, though, there were so many taverns in a, in a city or town, mm-hmm. they had some way to draw people in. Sure, yeah. I mean, you're competing for, for uh, patrons. Exactly, yeah. So this is one of those drinks that were made or created to kind of draw people in. Mm-hmm. And eventually it spread it out. And, of course, then they all did it. Right, right. Yeah. So the flip itself, the recipe for this one is one cup of beer. 
See, oh, there you go. Well, it's already got well, your uh, uh, attention there. You had I noticed that. Yeah. Of beer. Of beer. That's yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> one cup of beer. And hey, I guess you. Yeah, you really sold. Can, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me two, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I guess it, it says beer in the recipe. I guess it could be anything. Any kind of beer. I mean, that's, whatever. That's, yeah, you know, that's whatever's your pretty, fancy. That's a pretty broad range nowadays, yeah. but I guess back in the day, not so much. No, I think pretty well there was a one standard yeah, kind of pint. You, you're looking at lager or lager. Take your pick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, when you say a cup of beer, you're talking about the unit of measure, the imperial unit uh, of measurement? Right. Okay. Not a pint or, okay. hey, I got this really this large like glass. Mug. That's yeah. a cup of beer, right? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, no. It's actually gotcha. a measurement of cup of beer. One ounce of Jamaican rum. So we talked about Jamaican rum again sure. before. Two tablespoons of molasses. Okay, so that's going to darken it up, thicken it oh, up. Oh, yeah, for right. sure. Yeah, exactly. And then, so what you're going to do is you can put that in your glass, mm-hmm. and you're going to take a loggerhead, which is... Uh, Come again? <laughs> yeah. So a loggerhead, what it is, is a tool that they used to use back then. Um, it was a, basically um, a sphere or a ball on the end of a long stick. Ball on a stick. Ball on a stick. Okay. A metal stick, obviously. A metal rod. Okay. And what like you do a metal is, ball, too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. A ball at the end of it. And what you do is you'd heat that up, uh-huh. like basically in, in your fire or, you know torch and these days you can do torch or whatever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and then you would put this in the drink and what it would do is it bubble and bubble oh, over okay and, and like sear caramelize it, some almost of the caramelize it and, and you would actually right. taste almost like the burnt sure. kind of yeah, yeah. texture to it or flavor to it Interesting. um and that's exactly what they did now this this tool we talk about the lugger head um was also used for you know back then in the taverns there'd be fights and stuff things would break out people yeah. have disagreements <laughs> not like today it's not like you know yeah. you're lying let me get my Google. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was no Google back then. So, you know, of course, if someone disagreed with you, sometimes it would break out into a brawl. Sure. Now, yeah. the it bartender, wasn't, wasn't guess the what? the marquee I... of Queens uh, Borough or whatever <laughs> exactly. it was uh, rules. Yeah. Now, yeah. as a bartender, and I wish I kind of actually had this tool, the, the loggerhead was a great way, a weapon to kind of like break up the brawl. <laughs> oh, well, it's essentially a mace, like an old school mace. I exactly. Mean, right? yeah. Now, I wonder if that's where the expression we're at loggerheads or to be at loggerheads with somebody comes from. Oh. Um, that you, probably you, is the case. Like, like yes. to, to be at, in conflict or you know strong disagreement. Right. Kind of no, thing. exactly. That's exactly what it was. Hey, wow! You brought some facts to the show. I like it. Everyone's and in a you know while. what? You didn't have to stay up to two in the morning to do it. Hey yo! <laughs> oh jeez! <laughs> I feel cheated now. Now if the logger had actually got broken, and lots of times it would happen because you're heating it up and cooling it down, heating it up and cool down. It would well, break. and also fending off patrons with it. Yeah, I'm sure if you're beating them over the head, yeah. eventually it would break. Yeah. Uh, a blacksmith would actually have to repair it. Sure. And the cost of repairing it to the blacksmith was actually 10 ounces of rum. So I was um, like, hey, <laughs> I do my services of fixing this uh, tool for you. This booze tool. And I want my and rum. I want my booze. <laughs> I want my booze. Very exactly. Where did it come from? What's this segment about again? So this segment, we've done it Sorry. once before. Yeah. And so what it is, is that we're going to cover a rum somewhere from around the world, usually in the Caribbean right, islands. Right, right, right. Okay. And kind of okay. go through all the characteristics of that rum mm-hmm. and uh, its origin. Cool. And what it's all about. So what rum is on the agenda today? So today we're going to cover Cruisin' Rum, and it's from St. Croix. Okay, and I assume this is... is not spelled C-R-U-Z-I-N apostrophe. No. Hey, this ladies. Hey, ladies. Cruisin'. Cruisin'. Okay. Damn. Uh, no, this actually is a U.S. Virgin Island, St. Okay. Croix is. Okay, St. Croix, right? Yeah, so my first experience actually of this of this rum in particular, and it's got quite the story to it, is actually in St. Thomas. Mm. So I flew into St. Thomas, um, and I was actually, my end, end destination was St. John, but you can't fly into St. John, you have to ferry from St. Thomas to St. John. I see. Such a small so, so island. So it's the island of St. John. Just Let's not confuse yeah, it. Yeah, sorry. St. John the island right. was my final destination. But mm-hmm. you can't just fly into St. John. It's Understood. too small. Right. So you fly into St. Thomas and then you ferry over to St. John. Right. Now, is St. John the place with that uh, bar that you can only get to uh, by boat? That was Voice Van Dyke. Oh, okay. Which is actually the British Virgin Islands. Mm. And that's Soggy Dollar. Okay, and, and interesting remember, it's Van Dyke because that sounds Dutch. I know, but yeah, I know. Yeah. But remember, we also talked about too. It's like it's it, and it's every webcam. now and, webcam, yeah. yeah, yeah. Every now and then I'll tap in. I'm like, hey, let's see what's going on at the webcam there. <laughs> oh, some people are not wearing clothes. Okay, oh, right on. <laughs> okay, so so we're so, talking okay. about cruising rum, cruising rum. And so my first experience was actually was in St. Thomas. So I flew into the airport mm-hmm. and I'm waiting for my luggage and I'm sitting there and this guy comes up with a huge tray of 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 samples of alcohol. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, no, go ahead, take one. They're free. And I'm like, wow, free rum. This is like the best airport. Best in the airport universe. ever, man. Yeah. And it is so smooth, Cam, that you can just like drink it back. 
just sip no away. burn, yeah, nothing. Yeah. And so uh, I was so delightful by this rum. I so wanted more of it mm-hmm. that I'm like, you know what? I think I gotta let my luggage go around one more time. <laughs> and just like play off, like, wow, I don't know where my luggage is. Yeah. Hey, you got more of that rum, by the way? Yeah, uh, I'll tell while you one waiting. thing, and I'm getting thirsty. Yeah, and I'm getting thirsty because it's really hot here. So yeah. uh, hey, you know. Dish it up there. Give me a couple good of samples. Man. Good man. So, and then, of course, so I eventually got my luggage. <laughs> you, you still managed to get to, to your destination, not completely cross-eyed? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I eventually got there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it took a, took a while. No doubt. <laughs> now, the uh, the origin of this rum, mm-hmm. okay, is the Nelthrop family. Mm. And uh, so that's actually now owned by the Beam Suntory. Beam Suntory Corporation, I that's guess. That's right. Yeah, Suntory Corporation. Beam. Exactly. Okay, I know Suntory. Suntory is a Japanese brand. Uh, yes. They produce some really good whiskey now, apparently. I've, I, I haven't I tried have to them. try that. Yeah, no, it's interesting because they used to be sort of a joke, but uh, Japanese whiskeys have really come a long way. Um, but Beam, uh, this isn't like Jim Beam, is it? Yes, actually it is Jim Beam. Very really? good. So Jim Beam. So they're in partnership with Suntory, or yeah. So what it is is that Jim Beam, just like um, we talked about before, other uh, suppliers sure. actually just bought out other distillers, right, right. And eventually, now they actually are the third largest producer of distilled beverages in the world. Oh wow! Okay, so this is a th- so this is they went a from Jim Beam to one thing to yeah. like, hey, we're just going to buy vodka, we're going to buy some whiskeys, we're going to mm-hmm. buy some rums, we're just going to just whole cover the blanket, right. All right, so, so the Cruiser Distillery is also the largest American private and distributor of labeled rum. So they have their own private rum, mm-hmm. and then also two are the largest American rum distributed to the whole world. Wow. Okay. Through, through the States. This is the first, the biggest yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, it's a big American company. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So also, too, the Cruiser Distillery, which is formerly known as the Estate Diamond. That was what it originally was oh, called. That's a fancy name. I yeah. know. Eh? I think it should have stuck with that. Yeah, I kind of it agree. It sounds kind of fancy, like, oh... I have some estate diamond here. Ooh, yeah. Ew. Pour me a glass. Well, and I, I could just picture the, the, the bottle would be more expensive than its contents. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It'd be a fancy design. Oh, yeah. It'd probably have a horse on there somewhere. Pineapples. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So they've been around for over 250 years. Oh, wow. Okay. So they, yeah, they've they, been around the they block. They know what they're doing. Right. I don't well, think they've, I think they figured it out. So where does the name come from? Cruzan. Cruzan. Like C R U Z A N. That's correct. A, I, I don't like that's a is it a family name or so what it actually is is a named after the people of Saint Croix, who are also known as Cousins. Oh, okay, Cousins. Yes. Okay, Cousins. Yes. Yeah, Qua Cross. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, cross-eyed. Okay. Woo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, after a few drinks, you will be anyway, yeah. right? <laughs> so, so, so you're saying they have a whole variety of different rums, though, right? It's not just like a single. Not a single white rum, right? Exactly. Okay. So, so, some of the rums yeah. that they have are an aged rum. They also have a white rum we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, One fifty-one proof. Mm-hmm. So, hey, they got some. Woohoo! Uh, spice back to help. Yeah, spiced rum. Mm-hmm. But this is what's really cool about this rum in particular, and is one of the reasons why I like using this rum is because they also have over ten different kinds of flavors of rum. Um, like flavor flavors, flavors, like coconut, mango, vanilla, mango. Oh, pineapple, wow. black cherry, key lime. I mean, damn, it, yeah, it goes on and on and on. I've and never really heard of that for rum. I've heard of coconut rum, but that's about exactly. the extent of exactly. Like, like if you, when you think of flavored spirits, you automatically think of vodka, vodka. I mean, right? maybe Stoli. a gin. Yeah, you can get some citrus gins, that type of thing. But but that's it. So, so even rum itself is no. This is probably the only country I know of that has, actually has this many flavors of rum. Have you tried any of these? Yes. Yeah, so in my repertoire, I have the um, the coconut one. Okay. Yeah, Excuse me. Coconut rum. Um, yeah. Well, no, actually, it's really good. Okay. Well, yeah. No, but, um, but it falls within the same, same bailiwick. Yeah, yeah. So I have the uh, key lime, coconut, pineapple, and mango. I think is the other one I have. Hmm. I think um, I'd be torn between mango and pineapple, but I have a feeling that pineapple would be better. I get this. So the bottles down there are one liter, so not 750s sure. okay. or 26 ounces as we yeah, know yeah. In, in, in Canada. Yeah. It's one liter. Um, and they're about $10 a bottle. Oh, boy. $10 a bottle for a liter of rum. Mm. Holy crap. <laughs> You're saving money with every glass. Oh, my glass. God. <laughs> so it's funny because then when I travel down there, and you know there's, there's obviously a limit of how much alcohol you can bring back. Of course, yeah. Uh, Norma's like, well, what are you going to do if you bring back too much? I'm like, well, I'll just pay duty on a $10 bottle of rum. Big yeah. deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what's it going to be? A couple bucks? I mean, still, I'm still coming out on top. You no know what kidding. I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, like, quite honestly, I mean, th- th- this company and these, these flavors, I mean, it sounds kind of like the perfect tiki rum 
very offering, tropical. You know? Oh yeah. So when I make a lot of tropical drinks at my tiki bar, mm-hmm. Cruise and Rum is exactly one of the rums okay, I it, use it, for sure. Big. Bar none. Actually, I think it's on my bar rail. Oh really? I see. Okay, <laughs> that's how good it is. Duly noted for next time. There we go time. for next time you're at the now, tiki bar. Well, yeah. I have to ask, and I think you already told me, but I just want to double check. The tiki bar is closed now, isn't it? Well, it's been dismantled. Dismantled. Yeah, yes. for the winter. For winter, it'll get wrapped up probably in a week. Okay. And that's always a sad, yeah, that's sad, a sad day. day. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like Black Tot Day. Mm. <laughs> it's like, there goes the rum. Yeah, We're yeah, done. Oh, boy. The sweet, sweet yeah, here you go. Here you go. Did you know? I did not. Now what we do, um, our sh- the Did You Know segment is usually about stuff that we've already talked about. Now, this like one's going to be episode. in the episode. Yeah. This one's going to be a little different. And the reason why is because it's October 4th was a special day. Hmm. And we just passed it not too long ago. Right. It was actually National Vodka Day. So I thought, you know, oh. when we bring it up yeah. and... Happy National Vodka Day, Happy belated National everyone. Vodka Day. Yeah. Schwinn. Yeah. Salut. Right? Yeah. Salut. Yeah. Prost. Um, and here's here's a spinoff. So the other thing that actually is also October 4th is National Taco Day. <laughs> and, that is... Possibly the worst combination I could Vodka think of. and taco. Yeah. So somewhere there's an angry Mexican going, what? Where's my tequila? Hey, baby, I uh, want vodka and tacos for dinner again tonight. That's just, it. Yeah, yeah. that's not going to happen. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. yeah, there's a pissed off I Mexican can't see the and aftermath a pissed of that. off Russian. And exactly. A pissed off Mexican mean? and a pissed tacos. off Russian could walk into a taco bar. and uh... <laughs> That sounds like a joke. <laughs> no, well, like... yeah, it feels like a joke, too. There we go. Hey, if you get a punchline for that, folks, submit no. it. No. <laughs> So, okay, give, give me some facts about vodka. All right, vodka, some cool then. facts about vodka. So, actually, it was known as a medic- medical cure. It was actually a cure for disease. Hmm. Uh, one of the cures of disease actually was a plague. It would, cu- it would actually cure the wow. plague. Well, that'd be now, handy. vodka still actually does have some uh, medical properties of it hmm. that it pertains to. Hmm. So, a couple of the properties that it has. Makes uh, uh, members of the opposite sex more attractive. I didn't even notice that. They get better, <laughs> better looking. Yeah. So, okay, so, so okay. it's got some medicinal, uh, like I interrupted you there. But oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Medicinal properties. Yep. So, so a couple of properties it has is hair and skin enhancement. Hmm. There you go. Yeah. Hmm. I, I, I have heard of people using vodka to lighten their hair color. Oh, okay. I mean, I realize you wouldn't have any issue with that, but, <laughs> uh, you, you know, like like for those of us with a little bit on top. So you're saying I should drink more vodka? <laughs> it should be- <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you never know. know; it might help, right? Yeah, hey, okay, couldn't <laughs> hurt. That's right. <laughs> I mean, like the George Costanza, I seeing sprouts. Now. Oh God, poor old George. Uh, okay, so other things that it also has is a disinfectant. Well, that's of a given. course, maybe yeah. I don't even know yeah. Hey, stress reducer. Well, absolutely, yeah, or stress enough. enhancer. It really kind of depends on your and you your know. personality, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. A few too many vodkas, and all of a sudden, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, Tommy's not so friendly. Yeah, fists start <laughs> flying. Uh, fever reducer. Oh, well, again, same thing. You know, yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's a vasodilator, so you would end up losing more heat from from your your skin, and that could, in theory, help reduce your core fever. body temperature. Yeah. True, and uh, heals arthritis. Well, it's a great painkiller. That's for sure. No. Yeah. Also, too, remember, like we've all seen this, right? Movies like the westerns and things like this. Like, they would pour on like. Like, you get a gunshot, right? Gunshot wound? Yeah, yeah. You would pour, like, vodka or whiskey on it. Okay, well, we're going to tend to the wound now. That's right. Yeah, no. You put, Here you, we go. Let's purify it. Let's see, get it all cleaned up first. Yeah, or you, like, you, you pour a little, or you, like, dump a little bit of gunpowder in there, and then you pour on the vodka, and then and you light set it, it alight. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Now it's yeah. it's ready to yeah, go. Yeah, I hurt, Jeb, but it's a good hurt. It's a good pain. Yeah. There you go. So, vodka uh, came from the Slavic word, vog. Voda. Voda. Ah, oh, you speak the language, do you? That's why he's got uh, another beer, yeah. <laughs> another beer in his hand, yeah. uh, which actually translates into water. So if hey. you think about it, vodka is eighty percent water, yeah, uh, for the most part, yeah. and then it's got yeah. a couple of other things in there, and that's all it is. Sure, really, yeah. no, it makes so, sense. Now here's a cool fact in my research on Vodka Day mm-hmm. was that the number one exporter of vodka. What's the first country you think of when you think of uh, exporter of vodka? Oh, Russia. Russia, right? We all do, right? Yeah. Vodka, Russia. Actually, no, it is Sweden. Did you actually know that uh, Putin actually has? And I saw this the other day. It's hilarious. Putin actually has a calendar. Yes, you can buy. Oh yeah. yeah. And every month, I guess it's him somewhere out in, in the some wild, other shirtless escapade. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. hunting deer or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, caring for endangered tigers. Oh, my God. 
All right, so so here's the here's the numbers we talked about. Okay, so breakdown. Sweden. Yeah. In 2017, Sweden exported two sorry 463 million dollars worth of vodka. That's a lot of vodka. That's a lot of vodka. Hmm. France was the second highest. With France. 405. Weird. I don't know that I've ever. I know. I don't know any of a French, French vodka. vodka. Yeah. But oh, well, well, okay. Well, 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 yeah, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Passing it off to the Russians? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Import. Here we go. <laughs> uh, so Russia ends up in the top five with 135 million. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're not even like like they're not even the top three. Yeah, exactly. Eh? And it's their stuff. It's I, their I have to assume that it's largely because anytime anybody t- tries to export vodka from Russia, there's a mad rush to said vodka for it to be drunk by Russians. Doesn't mean I, 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 I like I think when you may mentioned before, they probably don't export because they're drinking it. Well, exactly. Uh, yeah. Hello, consuming yeah. it. So we're why? all out. <laughs> That'd be like me having, you know, like a case of beer and going, here, folks, here, you'll have the beer. Here yeah, you go. Or asking and me to And I like... will have none. Okay, so the coolest thing, uh, the coolest way to drink vodka actually goes to the Russians. Mm. So NASA actually will not let uh, an astronaut drink in space. That's the National Aeronautics Space Administration for... Uh, wow. Holy smokes. I didn't, I didn't even know that. I was curious. Holy crap. Mm. Okay, Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> Not actually a scientist, an engineer. Engineer, by, okay. By, uh, by trade. Okay, you yeah. go. So uh, the Russians actually, what they do is they actually put it in tubes so the cosmonauts can actually consume it. So the so, uh, so, so Russian astronauts are allowed to drink and the American and international right. no, astronauts not allowed are allowed to. Now, do you really want a drunken cosmonaut sitting on a space station? I'm not sure what's worse, a, a sober Russian or a drunk Russian? Well, all I can think about is that he's probably sitting there thinking that the room's spinning. The room's probably not spinning. The space station's probably spinning because he put the wrong coordinates in. And uh, <laughs> duly noted. You know what I mean? It's like the room's spinning. No, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing's spinning. <laughs> oh dear it's God. Like, <laughs> well, and I mean, I realize you're not a video game guy, but uh, if you've ever tried to play Grand Theft Auto drunk, uh, you learn why you shouldn't drive drunk. I'll oh my god, much. I can imagine. <laughs> so, uh yeah, I mean, I wonder if the the, the being allowed to drink vodka on the uh, space station has anything to do with the mysterious drill holes that have appeared all in the outer shell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have to do some repairs. Uh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder where those came from. Jeez. Uh, this looks like a hole made by a whiskey bottle. Yeah. Uh, how did that get there? <laughs> I'll just plug it with another bottle. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> circle of life. A circle of life. Oh, <laughs> God. And that is all we need to Did You Know. Right on. Yes. So that is the rest of our uh, rest of our show, actually. That's all mm. we're said and done there. Mm-hmm. Right um, yeah, we got some information out there. So if you're now in the cold weather and you're like, Burr, what can I drink? They warm me up. Rum, butter, hot water, and some miscellaneous stuff. There we go. Some miscellaneous cinnamon. You know, your favorite. Mm. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Better than pumpkin spice. I'll give it that. I know, I know. I'm so oh. tired. And it's, I think it's what, end of October? Is that when it stops? No, I don't think so, because then you got American Thanksgiving. Right, because actually for, or so, actually, yeah, let's explain. So in Canada, we just actually just had our Thanksgiving. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's based weekend. on like like English or British Thanksgiving. Which right. Harkens back to like the 1500s and so, and it, it's it's weird. It's much less cohesive or clear. Well, it, the the American story is much simpler. I'll put it that way. But also too, if you think about it, Thanksgiving, is one of those stories that if you know the true meaning of what happened back then, it's completely different than what kids learn in school, right? Well, yeah. I mean, if we're talking about American <laughs> Thanksgiving, it's kind of whitewashing the genocide of uh, indigenous peoples. But Exactly. Uh, we'll come yeah. to take your land, but thank you. Uh, th- <laughs> thanks for helping us survive the winter so we can wipe right. you out now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. Eh? So then, <laughs> yeah, so then we have Thanksgiving, and then we have Halloween. Mm-hmm. And then, and then in the there's States, American Thanksgiving. Yeah, their Thanksgiving. And then it's... They have Black Friday, yeah. which, oh my God. I remember when I was living in the States, and as if... So what ends up happening, okay, I'll explain it because um, I lived in the States for a while. Mm-hmm. So on Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving dinner, mm-hmm. what all the wives and uh, the girlfriends would do is they lay out all the flyers, and they all have different times. So, okay, the DVD player, free DVD player is over here at 2 o'clock in the morning. The the whatever, um, you know, free clock, whatever, or the cheap clock is over here at 4 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And literally what they do is they sit there and map out the next day. Yeah. Because Black Tot Day, sorry, Black Tot, yeah, well, pretty well, could be Black Tot Day. It absolutely uh, could, Black yeah. Friday is the next morning. Right. And literally and 2 o'clock rush. in the morning. Yeah. And so I remember like, hey, do you want to go with us? And I'm like, no, um, I want to sleep in because just trying to find parking will be a, a, 
All I can say to all that is that my personal time is worth more than saving 50 bucks on a DVD player. Also, too, but now they have it online. They have Black Friday online. Oh, I know. So, hey, I don't even have to even go to the mall. But then there's no trampling. No, well, you know, so also, too, the thing that turned me off from Black Friday was that my first year down there, a guy died at Walmart. Oh, God, he was just opening he was the doors. To death. Yeah, right, right. you tried to open the doors. They stomped on the door, broke the door. The mm-hmm. door landed on top of him, mm-hmm. and then they trampled on top of the door and killed him. Well, you see, and in Canada, we're more what? civilized what than that. I mean, we, hell? We, we deal with, with disagreements uh, uh, by punching by parents punching each other in the face at their child's hockey game. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we take it out in other ways. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That, if you remember Kmart, do you remember Kmart? Vaguely. Okay, so Kmart used to have this blue light special. Yes. So when it would happen to be like this, uh, you know, bin of something, let's say socks. So socks would be on sale for a dollar for 15 minutes. And some poor sap would have to sit there with a price gun as these people would like just jump in like vultures. Yeah, yeah. Grabbing all the socks they can and then getting him to price it for a dollar. God, he's lucky to have come out with shorts on. Well, the thing is that that wasn't too bad during the process is when it ended. Because there'd be people like, hey, I had the socks in my hand the entire time. So yeah. you're going to give me that dollar, right? Yeah, or I'm be like, sorry, mess you up. time is up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, That's a great so, way to get rid of employees, I suppose. Well, that, if you know, yeah. I think after a couple of years, they got <laughs> rid of it. It's like, we got to shed a few employees yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> Only the strong can Well, we survive. can't fire them. So guess what? We'll put them on blue light special. Yeah, be eaten alive. <laughs> <That's> uh, <laughs> and he was never go. seen from again. Never seen again. That's right. <laughs> no. So, oh, uh, so buddy. Yeah, I know we're dragging on here. I'm getting a bit thirsty. All right, so I just tell everybody who we are. So we are tikicentralcanada.ca. All one word. That's right. And we have our new website. Yeah. So no more like page down, page down, page down, page down. Um, it's we actually, don't suck anymore. That's right. Wait, we got a little creative. Yeah. Let's say multi-page. Hey, yeah. there we go. With a menu. Yeah. Yeah, kind of figured, who figured like, hey, maybe, maybe try this like being not as bad would be a good idea. <laughs> Well, I try that every day, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah, you win so, some, you lose some. That's right. Yeah. Um, so on there, there's uh, stuff about bio about me and Cam on there. Also, mm-hmm. too, about Tiki history. Mm-hmm. Also on there is the episode you can stream on whatever device you got going. Right. We also have all the recipes now on one page. Nice. Yeah, so that'll make all, things a lot easier. Yeah, much yeah. easier. So you can just browse through and kind of pick whatever you want. Mm-hmm. I did put pictures on there, too, of the drinks, so you kind of can get a figure get what a they sense. should look sure. like. Yeah. Um, also, too, we have our uh, subscribe page. So subscribe to either Google Play or iTunes or Player FM, which is one of them we talked about. That's right. We last talked about one. it last episode. Yeah. Great format. Um, also, too, there is a contact page. So we have, like, if you want questions or comments you want to make about us mm-hmm. or, you know, Cam in general, um, then you just leave them there. <laughs> <sighs> And hey, Cam, guess what? If you want to be on the hey, show beside hey, you hey? and drink a beer with you, you uh, can. I don't, know. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Cam's like, I don't share my stuff <laughs> yeah, with anybody. Yeah, what are I you mean, talking about? I, I still get the beer, right? That's right. You still get the yeah. beer. That's right. Well, the six pack will have to be split into two. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 in all seriousness, you can be on the show um, if you want it, it'd to. It'd be yes. great. It'd be great to uh, to hear from folks, uh, well, you especially know, in the industry. Right? Yeah, well, exactly. Like like, like industry people, or, or even even if you've got a family recipe that's uh, just something that uh, you know is popular with the fam, uh, let us know. We'd, we'd yeah, if you've got a cool it. recipe that you want to share yeah. and put on the show, hey, Bob, your uncle, you got it. Actually, my uncle's name's John. I have far too many uncles to know for sure. I um, may have. I have a Bobby. A Bobby, Bobby uncle, but Bobby, Bobby, B O B B Y, but but he, I think he's a like a great uncle or something. A great uncle. Here you go. Got two uncles named Keith. Wow, both that's on the awesome. same side of the family. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So what? Well, are, they're both cool, you, dude. So what happens when you go to a family reunion? Like you go, Keith, they go, yeah, 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 I, I, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. No, no, the other Keith, not you, Keith, the other Keith. <laughs> or do you like? Do you have distinctive name for them? No, just <laughs> Keith. Keith. Hey, whoever answers first. That's There's mostly what, a pointing and grunting. Pointing activity. and grunting. Yeah. Yeah. Process. Oh, yeah. Okay, so like your Asian process. There we go. Just point and grunt. Exactly. Exactly. It's go. exactly the same process I use for ordering I'm food. I'm got a feeling and, uh, that this is your li- Japan normal China. method of communicating at all times. Well, I mean, you've seen me at the bar. I've seen you at my fridge. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Point and grunt. Case in mm, point. Muskoka. Yeah. <laughs> Muskoka. <laughs> mm, Muskoka. 
Oh my god! Speaking about Muskoka, I think we need to go get some beers because uh, I'm uh, I'm parched, chapped out. You got a buzz. So uh, I think we should head off. Sounds good. And uh, thank you for listening, guys. And we'll see you next time. Have a great week. Cool. Peace. Well, I don't know about you, but I got informed, guys. Hey, guys, where's my drink? <laughs>